My high school English teacher, um, everybody asked me, you know, when I tell people the first poet I met, it was my um, English teacher. And, you know, prior to that moment, like, you know, I was writing poems, but I didn't think it anything happened beyond that. Like, I thought I wrote them in a journal, put it away, and then when family came over or whatever, I just shared it. Well, Mr. Grimes, you know, he would, you know, him being an actual poet, he would bring his poems to class and he'd say, I want to try these out with y'all. And I said, like, well, why you want to try those, you know, why you want to try your poems out with us? What you getting ready to do with them? And he said, oh, I'm going to go to this cafe and, and read. And like, my head just went hot. I was like, what? There's a place for this? You know, poems don't just stay in your journal. There's people that actually want to hear them. And so that just like really just, you know, just open up the possibility of poetry. But I mean, I think the the writers that sustained me after that though was um, initially like Sonia Sanchez. Um, you know, I was in the Nikki Gio I was reading some Nikki Giovanni. I was really heavy on Nikki Giovanni, but somebody was like, "Yo, check out Sonia Sanchez." And so I, um, to this day, I still love her book, um, "Shake Loose My Skin." You know, at that time I didn't have enough money to buy all her books, so I just bought the collected selecteds. You know, it's a deal. You get all their work, or work from like all of the, you get a taste of like all of their previous stuff. But uh, yeah, so writers like her and, um, you know, Tony Hoagland, who just passed, you know, but a lot of the writers that helped sustain me. It depends on <clears throat> what's going on with me. At the time when I wrote, um, when I wrote the first book, I was single. So I wrote a lot about that. One person said, man, you know, you was going through it. You know, like just, you know, writing my relationships, writing about, you know, all that stuff. And um, this, you know, when the second book came out, I was married, was in grad school. And so my wife pops up a lot more in that. And so I was saying that, um, well, you heard from, uh, you know, when Rachel was doing the introduction that, um, I'm working on a new manuscript, and so with that, you know, just the surgery, you know, just, it's, you know, I'm really, like, it, it depends on what's going on, you know, where I'm at. Um, you know, I'm a father now, so uh, I have a couple poems about my daughter. Um, couple, I have a poem dealing with the tension of, like, the, in, you know, your parents, in-laws, and, you know, how they, you know, second-guess your parental instincts and stuff. So, you know, and that's still, that manuscript is still a work in progress. So I'm, and I'm not even, you have some writers that can plan it out, or I'm, you know, I'm going to write about this, and this is what's going to, I don't function that way. Like I, you know, I write, and then when I think I have enough stuff, I just sit with them and see how they speak to one another. And if I, you know, and that helps me determine if I have a collection or not. Oh, it's well, a good question. So I think, um, I think when I was um, younger, you know, my, you know, my mom could do no wrong. Like I, I mean, I, I still love my parents. You know, my mom could do no wrong. My dad was just always, you know, like bitter and, and critical, or whatever. And it's funny, you know, being a parent now, and you know, kind of, you know, I mean. We still love each other, but there's this tension because my, you know, again, that second guessing, the parental instincts and stuff. But, you know, too, like, you know, ha you know having uh, hindsight, you know, just looking back, and I'm just like, wow, like, my mother was pretty mean, you know, like, she could, she, you know, she's just brutally honest, but, you know, I think at, you know, when I was a kid, like, I just kind of blocked it out, but I'm like, whoa, you're pretty raw. You know, <laughs> I look back, especially when I think about some of the stuff she told me during that time, you know, I'm like, whoa, how did we, you know, how did we hang out, you know? <laughs> yeah. But, and then, too, my dad, like, I don't see him as only being critical now. Like, I, you know, that's why, you know, I'm able to see that our relationship is complicated, because... You know, he's a very caring person, but he could, you know, he could be hurtful, you know. Um, but the wild thing is, you know, as hurtful as he could be, my dad, between, my, between you know, he and my mother, he was more overprotective. 
of us. Like he was, you know, my mother was just kind of like, okay, you know. But my dad was like, you know, he wanted to know, you know, he was, you know, which was kind of odd because some of my friends, it was kind of, it was the other way around. But, you know, but I think, uh, I think now, like I can kind of look at the relationships I've had with my parents when I was younger uh, with, a, with a clearer focus now. Yeah, so Hulk, like I was always, and I spoke about this earlier, like I was, it wasn't until like the police killings, the, the um, and then too, like how the, it was just kind of raw, like the person got killed and then they're demonized, you know, posthumously. And so, you know, the Hulk became, you know, I became more interested in the Hulk because you have uh, Bruce Banner, and he had the Hulk, and he's not, the Hulk is not the Hulk all the time. You know, and so I was like, wow, you know, you have these moments where Bruce Banner, the humanity, can be seen, and then you have times when, you know, the, you know, the ugly just comes out and he becomes the Hulk. And I think all of us have the Hulk in us. Like, it comes out when we're not our best, but what's unfortunate is that, you know, people of color, we're, we're always just seen as the Hulk. You know, even when we're minding our business, even when we're trying to live our lives, you know, all people can see is the Hulk. No one sees our humanity. And so I thought, you know, the Hulk would be a, uh, it's a metaphor, but the, it's more so a personification because I'm writing in the, writing from the voice of the Hulk. But I, for me, like, it felt like the Hulk was a, a perfect vehicle to, you know, write about that and to, yeah.